Hello, welcome to part one of calculating the surface area of a torus using a surface integral. So here we have a torus. And in this video, we're just going to get the intuition of the surface of our torus. Okay, so as you know, we have to define a vector valued function. Now, before we do that, we just need to understand the nature of the surface we're dealing with here to help us define our vector valued function. So in this case, we're going to deal with a torus that is centered at the origin of our axes here. So this is the zero, zero, zero point, okay? So our z-axis is going upwards and our x and y axes are 90 degrees going that direction, okay? I won't draw the axes just yet. So this is also referred to as a donut. Now, as you know, a donut, or most of them anyway, have a fairly circular cross section, like so. Okay? That is a circle. If you cut a donut in half, you're going to find a circular circle, <laughs> basically. So, it, try and picture this. Define a circle, okay, that's in the torus, and then you sweep that circle about the x, y axis, and you, you're going to get a torus, the surface area of the torus. Okay, so let's say this radius of the circle here we're going to call radius A, okay, and the radius from the origin to the centre of the circle, okay, is going to be radius B, okay? So, if you think about it, let's say radius A moves, okay? As it moves, it draws out our circle, okay? So it goes from 0 to 2 pi radians. And then, once we drew out a circle, B is also going to rotate... 2 pi radians to create our surface we have here, okay, our torus. So that's the basic intuition for our vector values functions we'll come on to later. Okay, so this is a three-dimensional surface, okay, so our vector valued function is going to have two variables, which we're going to call S and T, which are both going to be angles, okay. So, so our torus here, let's draw a diagram where we're looking down at the torus. So, on the xy plane. Okay, this is going to be our y axis and this is our x axis, like so. Okay, and so our torus, we have our outside edge here. Okay, this is going to be a perfect circle, okay, with the centre at the origin. That's slightly wonky, but I'm sorry about that, I can't draw perfect circles. And the centre, the smaller circle, okay, the hole of the donut, is going to be like that. Okay, so our radius B is going to be this, dist this distance from the centre to here, okay. And radius A is going to be from the centre, well, where B finishes, to the edge of our outer circle. Okay, that's A, and that's B. So that's literally the plan of our surface here. Just looking down on the torus, we have B, which is this distance, and then we have A, okay? All right, so let's first of all dissect our two uh, diagrams. So we have our circle and we have our plan. So let's focus on then our, our xy plane a bit more before we move on to our circle of radius a. This is all very helpful for defining our vector valued functions which we'll do in the next video. So our xy plane we have y and we have our x-axis 
And so we're going to focus on more specifically the outer edge of the torus, this one here. Okay, and of course our centre is here. So, this distance here, as you know, is B, and then we have A, which goes up there. We have, an, we have a, um, another circle there. Okay, this smaller circle here, don't get confused with the hole we had here. This literally represents the z-axis popping out of the page, okay? That is not the centre of, that's not the hole of the torus here. Okay, that just represents the z-axis out of the page. What does represent the hole, though, is this here, okay? Because our outer edge of the surface that we're focusing on a bit more is this one here, okay? I'm just zooming in a bit so we, we get a better understanding of what we're dealing with, okay? So that's literally a diagram we have here, okay? This, this smaller circle in the centre just represents the z-axis popping out the circle, okay? I've enlarged the hole a bit, but I don't think that matters as much. So, right, so we, now we have our xy plane. So, as you can see, b, our radius, is at an angle to the y-axis. This angle is going to be our first variable. The angle is going to be t, okay? Of course, the angle t is going to vary as b sweeps out 2 pi radians, okay? So that's our first variable, t. So, let's just look at that again. Let's say our y-axis here goes out the page like that. This is our y-axis. And this angle here is T, okay, like we drew here, okay, we're just looking down. So as T goes from 0 to 2 pi, we sweep out the torus, okay, as long as we have our circle that's also defined, which we're also going to look at now. Okay, so I hope you're visualising all of this. Um, not to worry, you don't. Um, there's also some applications you can find in which you can um, map out the surface of a torus and you can sort of rotate the surface, which is also very good for visualising things, okay? Right, so we've done our, our xy plane, our looking, looking down at the torus, okay? Our angle T. That sweeps out in that direction. Now we're going to look at this smaller circle here with radius A. So, as you might have guessed, this is going to be a three-dimensional diagram. We're going to have our z-axis here and our y-axis like that and our x-axis like this. Okay. So, our radius B from the centre to, let's say, here, this is radius B. And let's take our circle of radius A, okay? This is that, alright? So, this is radius A. Okay, now, this circle is also going to have a variable. This is going to have an angle s, okay? As s changes from 0 to 2 pi, we're going to sweep out our circle. And once we've done that, once s goes from 0 to 2 pi, we can then sweep out the circle by varying t, which will give us the surface of our torus. Okay, if that makes sense? And so before we go into the next video looking at our vector valued functions for our torus, we need to have some constraints. t goes from 0 to 2 pi, okay, and s of course also goes from 0 to 2 pi because they're both involving circles here. We sweep out a circle by varying the angle s, okay, and then once we have that circle we then sweep the circle 
all the way around and back at 0 to pi, so 2 pi radians by varying t. Okay, so just to make that clear, a is the radius of the circle and b is the radius from the centre to the centre of our circle here. Okay, so in the next video we're going to use our diagrams and our two inequalities here to define a vector valued function for our torus. And once we have that, we can then go on and calculate the surface integral.